All right, welcome back and thanks for tuning in again. It's been a little while since the last video, but I'm trying to get back into it. So what we have here today is, I believe it's a 1981, so it's not all that old. Uh, Caterpillar Gen Set, 135 kilowatt with the venerable 3306 engine. Uh, this is a uh, kind of a service call for a friend of a friend, uh, but the unit, he bought it uh, on the cheap. It didn't make any voltage. I've already done some troubleshooting, found out we have a definite problem with the uh, Caterpillar VR1 voltage regulator. So rather than mess with any of that, we're gonna go ahead and put a Basler AVC 63-12 automatic regulator in place. Uh, this, uh, this, we're obviously on the clock here, so this is going to be a bit of a shorter video. We're going to kind of jump through some things, but uh, let's get started on it. Okay, let's start with a quick rundown of the symptoms here. So, the customer bought this gen set. It hadn't been run for some time. He was told that the voltage regulator was bad. He got the engine running, had no voltage output. This has a, an old... Uh, red coat control panel here, but this is the voltage regulator assembly, I should say. Voltage regulator assembly, because there's multiple components here. You got the brain, the brunt, uh, and a couple other components here. So when I, say, when I say the brain and the brunt, I mean this is the actual regulator here, the smarts, and then this is the output end, so this handles all the high output current. Caterpillar gen sets are known for their low field resistance and high field uh, current requirements. So that makes uh, selecting a replacement regulator a little bit difficult. Not so much these days because a lot of manufacturers offer uh, replacements that can handle pretty high current. Uh, Caterpillar does sell the VR6, which would work in this application. They're pretty expensive, coming in at about $1,200 or $1,300. Uh, the Basler here, uh, is a little bit, a uh, little bit less expensive. I believe Basler actually makes the VR6 for Caterpillar. Uh, the Basler's specs are a little bit different. It can't quite handle the low field resistance. Oop, sorry, the heater just kicked on. So we got to do a few uh, special things to handle that. Basically, what we're going to do is utilize this tray since it's already uh, mounted on rubbers vibration isolators. We're gonna gut it, mount the new regulator. We're gonna add two uh, ballast resistors, we could call them, and some fuses. So let's get started. You know, I was in such a rush to get started, I forgot to mention what I actually found when troubleshooting it initially. So, got the engine running, looked over the regulator, we actually pulled it out, Cleaned the main, these are usually the culprits here, these potentiometers are rheostats. So you've got your droop adjustment, your voltage adjustment, and your gain adjustment. Usually, when they sit a long time, you can see how much corrosion we've got here on these screws. You get a little corrosion on these windings of these rheostats. Once you get an open circuit there, the thing does not work at all. So I clean those, clean a few contacts, put it together and uh, it made voltage, but the circuit breaker, this thermal reset, tripped almost immediately. When we did have voltage, the voltage was max. So this is connected for 208. I, I saw about 340 volts before this breaker tripped again. We reset the breaker, exact same thing. This is actually a pretty common issue with these. I've seen, I think, three that I can recall of these regulators have that symptom. So really it could be either the brain here or the brawn. If one of these uh, SCRs here, we got two of them, one for positive, one for negative. If one of those failed shorted, we could get uh, excessive field current, but or it could be some electronic issue in the brain here. So like I said, it's pretty much at this point with the age of this thing, and the overall condition of it, it makes more sense just to replace the uh, everything on there. Luckily, we do have a uh, wiring schematic on the inside here that'll give us uh, all of our uh, terminal strip uh, connections so we know. Uh, we're gonna be utilizing three-phase sensing. So on these old cats, 
you got your sensing wires here, 20, 24, 20, uh, 20, 22, 24 are the three phases. 26 is neutral. Let's see, 5 and 6, those are your paralleling CT, so they run over to this guy right here. So that's only really utilized if you're paralleling with another gen set. That's your droop CT. We're not going to be utilizing that. We're just going to have to short that. Let's see, what do we got here? F1 and F2, that's F2. F1, those are the uh, outputs to the field down in the generator end here. This guy right here, that's your field. Uh, generator end checks out just fine. No issues there. And then we've got a ground. And then going up to the control panel, we've got FM and T0. That is the 120 volt output to our frequency meter here, FM being frequency meter. And 80 and 82, they go to the voltage adjuster rheostat. That's going to have to get replaced because the new regulator utilizes a completely different uh, uh, potentiometer. So, all right, now we can get started. All right, so there's all the old regulator equipment. Took it all off in one shot. And here's our layout. Terminal strip cleaned up pretty well. I'm going to reuse that since it's got all the numbers here. So, we've got a fuse block. This is going to fuse the three phase input to the regulator for sensing and power. The regulator itself, obviously. And we've got a pair of high power resistors here. These are 8 ohms a piece and they're connected in parallel. So their tolerances are pretty loose. So that is going to give us uh, about 5 ohms across these uh, two terminals here. And that is going to be in series with the generators field to bring our total field resistance up. So we're talking about well, about 5 ohms here. I already checked the gen field, which is about 2.5 ohms. So we're looking at about 7.5 ohms, which is well above the minimum value for the regulator. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt all this stuff down, and we're going to start wiring it up here on the bench. All right. Well, at this point, the power side of the regulator is done. So we've got our, our ABC123 <laughs> phase sensing slash power coming in here. Go through the fuse block. These are 6 amp. Uh, these are actually time delay fuses. They come up and they go to these first three terminals, which is the voltage sensing. And then we've got those jumped right to the next three, which is our actual input power. These three terminals is what the regulator utilizes to generate the DC output to the field. And the DC output to the field, F1 and F2, are these on the end. The ones on the end come, they go down, let's see, F2 goes through the resistors, F1 just comes straight over to the terminal block. So these will actually go out to the generator, F1 and F2. So the only real remaining uh, equipment or wiring we need to, to do is the voltage adjust potentiometer. We've got to bring that, uh, two wires for that down. And uh, the droop transformer, or the droop CT, which I am going to uh, provide the wiring for that, but I'm going to leave it jumped out because I don't know if it is a, a 1 amp CT or a 5 amp CT. Uh, and it does matter, the regulator has inputs for both. Not that I think anybody's going to use this thing for paralleling in the future, but we'll give them that option if they so desire. Um, one thing I have forgotten to mention was uh, the uh, field requirements are actually listed on the tag here. Excitation 21 volts, 8.8 .8 amps. So we have a 63 volt 12 amp capable voltage regulator. So we are well within the specs for this unit. Alright, get back to work. 
All right, well, so here's where we ended up. Regulator in the tray, mounted. Again, it's on rubber isolators. One thing I'm not too pleased with is I ran out of positions on this terminal strip. So the uh, remote voltage adjust potentiometer is just coming here. I got a couple quick disconnects. So, yeah, not the greatest, but it's it'll serve just fine. Yep, it looks pretty good to me. Here's our new potentiometer there. This is a 10 turn pot, so super fine adjustment. All right, well, let's uh, get this thing hauled outside. I'll connect the load bank to it and uh, verify operation. All right, well, we got another clip here with no audio. I think it's time to invest in some better recording equipment. So we're going to start her up. It's a pretty uh, cold day, really windy. So I guess it's not such a uh, loss that we don't have any audio. But it takes a little bit of cranking to get her fired up. A little smoky on startup. So pretty much we're going to start up, let the engine ramp up to speed, and we're going to see where the voltage is set at. So the voltage adjust potentiometer on the control panel I have set at the, about the midpoint. So it's a 10 turn potentiometer, so we're five turns from the end stop. So looking at the voltage, we had about 150 volts uh, we, were, we were making initially. So for the adjustment to bring it up to 240 volts, 208, 240 in that range, we're going to utilize the uh, main potentiometer on the regulator itself. Then the uh, remote adjust pot will give us, you know, a certain percentage of adjustment, you know, plus or minus whatever I have the uh, pot on the board set at. So we're going to bring it up slowly. 200, 215, 240. We're going to leave it set at 240. So with a low Y connection, that's going to give us a line to neutral voltage of 139 volts. Uh, 240 line to line. Cat generators of this vintage can't really give you a delta connection because they're only 10 wire. Kind of a shortfall there. The uh, the engine was at uh, proper speed. We were running a little bit over 60 hertz. Voltage regulator had no issues bringing the voltage up. Exhaust cleaned up pretty well. The engine was uh, pretty noisy at this point because it was dead cold. There we go, 240, 60.6, nothing wrong with that. Gonna let her warm up for a little while. Oh yeah, so here I had the uh, voltage adjust potentiometer wired up in reverse. So clockwise rotation reduced the voltage, counterclockwise rotation increased the voltage. So that's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, if it was going to happen, it was going to happen to me. I'm just going to have to go in there and um, resolder the uh, regulator. Not the regulator, the potentiometer. Change the wiring around. But it ran pretty good. Well, I'm not going to sit here and... Uh, make engine noises for you, so you're just going to have to put up with the pauses. Plenty of fuel pressure. I said this engine, I think the gen set only had maybe maybe 1,500 hours on it, according to the mechanical hour meter. One thing that was interesting, uh, I didn't mention it before, on the nameplate, it, uh, this gen set's rated for prime power. So usually these 3306 engines would be good for, well, closer to 230 kilowatt, 200 to 230. This one's only rated at 135, but it's prime rated. So that means they could carry that 135 kilowatt pretty much indefinitely. So the engine itself is pretty undertaxed with, uh, with that rating. But yeah, it looks good. Plenty of oil pressure. That frequency meter reading high you see there, we're reading like 64 hertz. That's probably due to the fact that we were feeding it 139 volts rather than 120. 
So if I if I trim the line to line voltage back down to 208, we'd end up with 120 volts line to neutral, and uh, it would probably read more accurately at that point. Yeah, 240.4, right on the nose. Pretty stable. And we'll leave the engine, get some heat in it before we start putting load on it. The next clip has audio, so don't worry. <laughs> I should pretty much just glue the, uh, the remote uh, microphone plug into the transmitter, huh? That's what happens. It comes unplugged. So even though the transmitter is paired with the receiver, it's not sending any audio. All right, on to the next clip. It's time to hit it with some load. with that for a little bit. Remember, this is a 135 kilowatt gen set. We're only at 41 kilowatts, so that's really nothing at this point.
little bit more. Well, there's two more things we got to look at, or at least that I want to address. We just shut it down. So there is a stability adjustment. Little pot right here. And then there is the under frequency roll off point right here, which they got a little sticker over it. So we're not going to touch that. So what under frequency roll off is, they call it UF knee, under frequency knee. So as a, a large load is applied, especially with these older gen sets with mechanical governors, you are going to expect some droop. Now, some gen sets recover promptly, some do not recover so promptly. What the under frequency roll off does is the regulator senses the frequency that the gen set is running at, which is directly proportional to engine speed. If the engine speed 
lowers for whatever reason, the voltage regulator will lower the output voltage a set point, a set value, to lower the KW load uh, of the on the generator end, thus kind of softening the blow to the engine's governor. So I have it set currently at uh, two volts per cycle or per hertz of droop. So if our set point is 240 volts at 60.0 hertz, if that frequency drops to 59 hertz and uh, the, the voltage regulator will lower the line-to-line -line voltage to 238 volts. Doesn't sound like a, a lot, but in a, in a transient load situation, in a hard big motor startup or just a, a hard load hits it, it really does make a difference. So we're not going to mess with that. Um, the stability adjustment, uh, I'm not going to do anything, I'm not going to touch it because it's good now, but pretty much if we were to see some uh, oscillations in the in the voltage at a steady state speed whether it be load or no load you can tweak that stability counterclockwise or clockwise counterclockwise or clockwise uh, I think increases the dampening effect uh, in the regulator uh, you can pull up the Basler uh, AVC 63-12 manual and have a look at that if you want but other than that I'm gonna call this a successful uh, voltage regulator upgrade. So, I appreciate you watching.